think that it's probably a fashion thing and I'm not bothered about fashion really so. <laughs> the helmet I bought was about 60 quid so we're looking at four times the price of that so that is definitely something that I think could put some people off. I don't know, I'll probably stick with the regular one for now. We've covered the Hofting airbag for cyclists on Bike Radar before, but we've come down to Bristol's Mud Dock today to see it work in action. I'm joined by John from Hofting UK, and we're going to talk a little bit about this exciting new product for urban cyclists. So John, first of all, can you tell us uh, where the product originates from and how it's come to be in the UK? It was uh, developed in 2005. They developed it when it became a necessity to uh, wear helmets. It was compulsory uh, in Sweden. It came to market in 2011 and uh, it's now sold throughout most of Central Europe and we launched here in the UK last spring. One thing I personally would be worried about with the Hofting is that there's nothing covering my head and that might make me ride more nervously, sort of like uh, not wearing a seatbelt in a car. For people who don't wear helmets when they're out cycling, commuters, whether it's to do with their hair or they just don't believe in the, in the safety of helmets, why should they use a Hofting? I mean, of course, it takes a bit of a shift to move from having something here to having something here. The more people see other people wearing it, the more it builds a trust. What happens if it goes off? Um, what are the options for customers? You know, anybody who's bought one should speak to their uh, insurance uh, company to see how they can cover this. For most insurance companies, it's a lot cheaper for them to buy a new one of these for £250 than to pay for hospitalisation. But we, we also have a replacement programme where uh, once somebody's bought one and had an accident, we'll send them a brand new one for £99. But what is it that makes it worth that money? It is a very clever piece of kit, so there's a black box in it in case of serious accidents. Most regular helmets, anyway, uh, when we're talking about high-end, come in somewhere close to that. Um, so it's not just a collar, like a scarf that you wear, a fancy collar. Actually, there's a lot of technology in this. Okay, so John, I've seen the Hofting in action, um, and it inflates with helium. Um, is there any reason why helium was picked as a particular gas, or is it just it's the most convenient one to use? Uh, I think it was particularly selected because it's a, it's a cold gas. As you imagine, it's got gunpowder in there, um, of course, the, the, the gas. And uh, when it goes off, for maximum protection, they've chosen that because that was the best uh, for the job. It's been pre-programmed with thousands of different accident situations, recreated by stuntmen to recreate known accidents so that we can program it in there. So uh, what we've also done is programmed in normal cycling activity so the computer in there can tell the difference between normal cycling activity and when there's an accident situation. And that's all sorts of accidents, if, if I go over the handlebars, or if I go off sideways, or if a car hits me from behind, it'll yes. still go off. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's been tested to, uh, to go off in every uh, accident situation, except perhaps in a very rare occasion where you're cycling and something comes from above and hits you on your, in the middle of your head without you moving, then of course it won't, it won't detect it. And um, how does it work? Is it um, tracking the cyclists as they go along? Is it um, sort of taking um, measurements of their movements the whole time? There's, there's a monitor in there that starts reading your movements once you switch it on 200 times per second. It immediately detects you're about to have an accident or deploy in a tenth of a second. So the European standards for cycling helmets, it's um, an impact of 250G or less um, experienced by the head when you hit a kerb from a height of about a metre. Um, does the Hovding meet these European standards or is it slightly different? Well, it's actually a lot better. It's, it comes in at 60 which gives you a far more protection than the 250 allowed. So we know that um, Hofding's been testing all sorts of situations. Has there any been, ever been any cases that you know of when um, the Hofding hasn't gone off when it should have done when someone's had an accident? Well, thankfully, the Hofding has always gone off when it should, as it's been made to do. Um, if anything, it's a bit more sensitive and it will go off when it's not meant to go off. Uh, but generally, when it's there to save your life, it will always do that. So now we've heard all about the Hofding, I'm going to strap one on and actually give it a go to see if it works. But before I do that, I'm going to have a chat with Sol, who's the Hofding stuntman, and he's going to explain exactly how to fall off a bike safely. And if you want to see a video all about that, then just look for the link in the video description. 